working on. We're going to give you a presentation here on uh, the housing process for fall 2023. That would be fall through the spring. But uh, in particular interest for us is the actual process for you students to be able to get housing for fall on campus. And we'll, have, we'll share some information for on-campus resources as well, but our primary focus will be the on-campus process. Let's do it. All right. Oh, this is the wrong one. No, this is the right one. So this is the housing application and room selection for continuing students. Uh, if you have questions as we go, please feel free to put them in the chat and we'll do our best to answer them as we go. So first to talk about is the timeline of events. Uh, the first thing we need to be aware of, and it's critical with this process, is the application period from April 10th to April 17th. This is the time where you would apply for housing for next year. Uh, if you do not apply during this time, you will lose your priority status for housing for fall 2023. If you do not have priority, but you're still interested in on-campus housing, you should definitely apply during this period as well. Uh, although you won't be able to do room selection, it'll still give you a leg up when we're done with the priority process and any available spaces we start to assign to students who don't have priority, uh, very valuable to have applied during the priority period. The next critical time period for us is room selection. This is where continuing students with priority who apply during the priority period will choose their own spaces, room selection. It will be for uh, between May 10th to May 26th. It's staggered over uh, four waves. Um, and we'll talk about those waves here. Uh, but during that time is when you would actually be choosing your room. Either the slides or the process will be updated and available on the website as well. Okay. Next uh, of the timeline is the assignments by housing staff. That is to say, if during the room selection process, you do not choose a room or you're not able to because there's not necessarily enough spaces for everyone during that process, um, I and my peers will be working to assign you uh, according to the application preferences you gave us. And that's from May 31st to about mid-August. So. We hope to be done with all, all the priority assignments by mid-August. That's our timeline goal. Uh, we're gonna do this little overview video for you here. So let's do that. Or not. Are you a UCSC continuing student interested in university housing next year? Here are five things you should know. All continuing students can apply for university housing. If you have priority status and apply on time, you'll be invited to participate in room selection. If you apply without priority status, your application will be on the general wait list. Not sure what your status is? Check your UCSC email for a message from housing at ucsc.edu or ask your housing office. The housing info sessions hosted by your college are the best place to learn about fall housing and get your questions answered. Students with priority status, be prepared before you apply. Understanding your options and the room selection process can help you decide which college or community to apply to. And if you would like to live with friends, you must all apply to the same community. If you apply to your affiliated college, you will be eligible for earlier room selection passes. Be sure to apply during the housing application period in April. If you have priority status, you must apply by the deadline or you will lose priority. If you don't have priority status, you will be higher on the general wait list if you apply during this time. Students with priority status will be eligible to participate in room selection, either on your own or as a member of a group. All group members need to have priority status and apply to the same community. Room selection in May is the beginning of the housing assignment process, but it's not the end. Housing coordinators will be working throughout the spring and summer to assign any remaining spaces to students still in need of housing starting with a priority waitlist. Be flexible. Indicating as many room types as you agree to accept in your application will help your chances. To learn more, visit housing.ucsc.edu slash priority.
All right. Well, that was a quick little nutshell for you of the whole process. <laughs> Excuse me. Let us delve into the details. All right. So first, let's talk about housing priority status. So this is all about continuing students, right? Um, you have been notified about your priority status, or at least all students that are living on campus, in an email sent to you on February 23rd from housing at UCSC.edu. That email would specifically call out whether you have priority or you do not. If you did not get the email, uh, a copy should be in your messages in the housing portal. If you're curious about how the priority is allocated and more details about it, it is on the housing website in the priority groups area. Um, if you're an off-campus student right now and you didn't get the email, you do not have priority. One of the criteria for having priority is to be living on campus right now. Uh, so that would be why. Um, there is no way to be able to get priority if you do not already have it. So if that is what you're looking at, I'm afraid that is not possible. Um, we're going to go into it a bit more. I want to be clear, even if you do not have priority, you are still welcome to apply for housing. Um, our likelihood of having much space available at the end of the process for our priority students is not great. We won't have much. And what we have will probably be residence hall triples. But um, you are still welcome to apply if nothing else can be a valuable backup for you as you look for off-campus possibilities. Oh, I should just do this in order because here you go. If you don't have priority, um, you'll be on the general wait list. Uh, that's different from what we consider the priority wait list. Uh, if you are going to take this route, be very flexible about the types of spaces you would accept. If you're going to only say apartments, recognize that the likelihood of apartments at that stage in the game is not very good. Um, be patient. We are going to go through the priority process first, and we're looking that to take probably until mid August. And we do not expect to be able to accommodate all interested students. Uh, keep that in mind. If you do not have priority, definitely be looking at many different places, off campus in particular. Right, we strongly encourage you to do that. Um, so when it comes to off-campus housing resources, now this definitely applies if you do not have priority, this is critical. Uh, even if you have priority, if you're looking for something like specifically apartments or you would only take a single room, I highly recommend you look at off-campus options as well. Uh, the Community Rentals Office is a resource that's designed just for you students to help you find off-campus housing. Um, they have a lot of great resources, uh, particularly of their resources is the Renters Workshop. It's a small tutorial you go through that'll give you a ton of details about off-campus housing that you may not know already. Um, they have a, they have a, so many resources, including uh, copies of rental agreements, um, information about what a parental letter of guarantee is, uh, details on the different regions of town, uh, what kind of rates and uh, rents you can expect to find. Um, there's the placesforstudents.com rental listing. So this is like a whole list of off-campus rentals of communities around UCSC where these people actually uh, contacted us or sometimes community rentals reaches out to them as well um, to be able to post sites with us uh, as well as roommate profiles for other students or UCSC affiliates who are looking for off-campus housing. You could find roommates, possibilities of houses, all sorts of great stuff. And this is all restricted to UCSC affiliates. Um, some landlords will um, specifically go only through this resource, so it can be very powerful for you. Um, Off-campus housing resources, further ones, uh, the renter's workshop. Oh boy, I just talked about this. Uh, tenants rights and responsibilities is a great clue. The security deposit, do's and don'ts, this is super information for you to have if you're looking at off-campus housing. Um, a lot of clues and tips about optimizing your living experiences with housemates, landlords, and neighbors. And I'd like to take a little moment too about the rental application packet. The rental application packet is uh, is a, basically you and your group, if you're gonna live together, um, plan out a lot of the materials that you'll need in advance. Uh, it's where you get an opportunity to fill out your rental, a potential rental application in advance, where you can do it calmly at a table with your peers and you can look up uh, previous addresses or phone numbers before you're at an actual open house. Um, where you can put down the various information and the rentals workshop will walk you through it uh, that you want to put in a packet to be able to present to a house that you're really interested in living um, as opposed to perhaps going to an open house where there's uh, honestly hundreds or at least scores of other people looking to get it and trying to fill out an application at a patio table with a pencil um, where you don't have access to all the information that you'd want for it so doing a lot of this in advance will make a huge difference for you in terms of finding off-campus housing I highly recommend the packet, but if nothing else, please take the renter's workshop and be up to date on the information so you'll have the strongest possible way to be able to get yourself what you need. 
Some further tips for uh, seeking off-campus housing is the timing for it. Um, April, May, and early June are totally live for it. In fact, I, if I was, if it was me, I'd be looking now, uh, even now in March. Um, you can begin searching listings through the Places for Students uh, listing site. You can create your own roommate profile, start looking for roommates. Uh, additional listings occur all the time, um, often 30 days before the rental is available. So you have no idea exactly when that'll pop up. So constantly looking is well worth your while. Excuse your while. As well as talking to your friends about your plans. Uh, word of mouth is extremely valuable when it comes to off-campus housing. Uh, talk, talk to your friends, talk to your peers. Uh, see if anyone has something that they know about, they can clue you in on. These are all powerful tools for finding off-campus housing. All right, I'm gonna swing back to the uh, application period. So that's April 10th to 17th. During that period, any continuing students interested in fall housing can apply for housing. You'll apply through the housing portal, studenthousing.ucse.edu. Uh, once again, this is critical to keep your housing priority status. Regarding priority, right, priority, excuse me, priority is not a housing guarantee, but it will greatly improve your chances of finding housing with us. If you have priority, you must apply by that April 17th deadline or you will lose your priority status. The deadline is strictly enforced. If you are two minutes late, it will be gone. So watch out for that. You have a whole week to do it. So, you know, do it on the early side, not late. Uh, <clears throat> you are eligible to receive a room selection lottery time and perhaps select your own housing if you have priority and apply during the priority period. If you have priority and don't select the space during the room selection process, you will still keep your priority and I will work to find you a space during the, the following uh, summertime until that mid-August where we hope to be done with that process. Again, I will take questions at the end, so. More details about the housing application period. Uh, when you're applying, this is when you're doing your actual application through the housing portal, April 10th to the 17th, you will need to select the one college or community that you wish to apply to. Uh, and again, this is for students with priority. In this case, please carefully consider where you want to apply and understand how the college affiliation will affect the room selection process that you're going to be invited to. And we're going to go over that in a moment. You also need to coordinate with any friends that you want to live with. If you're going to be in a group, you all must apply to the same community. This is critical. And if you want something at Cowell, but half your group applies at Stevenson, the group will not form. You cannot uh, be at both Cowell and Stevenson with your applications and be in the same group. You must apply to the same community. And this is campus wide. So uh, if you're looking to be at a group at the village or the town center, you need to make sure you're all on the same page and that you all apply at the same community. <clears throat> Let's talk about housing options. At Cal and Stevenson, we have both apartments and residence hall spaces available for you for continuing students. Our apartments have a huge variety in shape. We have everyone from eight to two person apartments. That's eight, seven, six, five, uh, or in two-person apartments. We also have residence hall rooms. We do put aside some whole houses for continuing students um, that have a variety of spaces, mostly triples, as is a pretty common through UCSC. But we do have some quad rooms and some single rooms available as well. Uh, there are some other communities that are available to you as well. Um, some that you might know about or they might not know about would be the University Town Center. The UTC or University Town Center is located in downtown Santa Cruz, uh, amid all the downtown has to offer. Uh, you can take the Metro bus or the UCSC bike shuttle to get there easier or to get to campus from there. It is basically kitty corner from the Metro station uh, right in downtown, right above, I think it's Five Guys is the burger place there right now. Um, <clears throat> there are studio apartments there. These are double or triple occupancy. So there's no single spaces, but um, two or three people will share this little studio apartment. It has a private bathroom, a private kitchenette. And uh, there is a large lounge in the UTC as well with uh, multiple TVs, computer study areas, laundry facilities. And I believe they have like full-size ovens as well in case you wanna make cookies or lasagna. Um, this is uh, available to students of all affiliations. So affiliation will have no bearing at the town center. Um, it can be a really great option, a fabulous place to be for Halloween. They have this balcony that looks out over downtown. It's quite epic really. So the university town center can be a great choice for you. Another choice is the village. The village is located down by the East Field in the East Remote Lot. It's right by the farm, the UCSC Farm and Garden. So uh, if you consider where the East Remote parking lot is, the village is on the other side of the road, down a little road and in the lower quarry. Um, each house in the village is a combination of four single rooms and five small double rooms. 
take a moment here. A small double room is indeed a single room with bunked beds and smaller furniture, so beware. Um, not a bad choice. It can be a great rate uh, and often a viable option, but they are rather small. Uh, there is no meal plan required for the village. So this can be a, a really particularly good choice if you don't like using the dining services. And this is available to students of all college affiliations, like the University Town Center was. Affiliation will have no bearing here, so all will be in an equal footing when it comes to taking a village space. Uh, groups participating in room selection do not need to fill an entire house, but you can. So if you have uh, 14 of you that all want to live together, you can conceivably secure a whole village unit for yourself, which can be pretty cool. Um, there is a small common area uh, within the building. Um, as it noted, there's the four singles, five small doubles, three bathrooms within the unit, and a kitchenette. Um, I believe that the village still has a common or larger kitchen area as well for those cookies and lasagna makers. All right. There are some campus-wide theme housing options as well. There's the International Living Center. There are ABC-themed housing communities, and there's a trans-inclusive housing. Now, these theme housings are a little different from other ones in that when you're applying in a specific community, like say you're choosing Cal, you particularly want Cal, um, you can also indicate your uh, preference for one of these other communities. So if you're interested in the International Living Center, you do not have to apply to College 9. Uh, you can apply to wherever the other community is and indicate a preference for these other communities. Uh, these theme communities will require a supplemental application that you'll have to fill out and they will be reviewed before we offer any spaces in these, in these locations. Um, so keep that in mind. And uh, if, we, if you do put down an interest for a campus-wide um, theme housing, we'll be contacting you before room selection to offer you space in that community if we're going to offer you space there. So you have a little bit of time there, although it's a bit of a tight time frame to be able to choose whether you'd like to take what we offer at, say, the ABC themed community, or if you want to stick with your original application and go with that. Some more details on these groups, on these uh, themed housing locations. Uh, for the ABC themed, excuse me, for the ABC themed housing communities, they are located all over. We have them at Stevenson College, Oaks College, Rachel Carson College, College 9, and John R. L. Lewis College. Um, particularly for students whose interests span historical, present day, and future experiences of predominantly African, Black, and Caribbean peoples, this is a great community for you. Uh, this community is available to students of all college affiliations. So much like the village and the town center, we will not look at affiliation as one of the criteria for getting the space. You can learn more through the housing website and the ABC theme area. And uh, <clears throat> this does include a variety of both uh, residence hall, mostly all at Stevenson and the RPATH house, and apartments at the other communities and at Stevenson as well. For the International Living Center, uh, this is a thriving community of residents from around the world. There are about 40 different countries represented in the ILC. It's founded on the belief that the best way to foster international understanding is through working, living, studying, and socializing with people from different backgrounds. This community is located in the College 9 and John R. L. Lewis College Apartments and is available to students of all college affiliations. You can learn more through the College 9 website. Allow me to note again that as it's a theme community, you do not have to apply College 9 or John R. L. Lewis to indicate a preference for the ILC. If you're interested in this community, you can do it as a supplemental part of your other application. Uh, and one more of these uh, communities, these theme communities, is the trans-inclusive housing community. This is intended to create a safer, supportive living space for transgender, non-binary, or different gender identity and their allies, as well as students questioning their gender identity. This is located in the Redwood Grove Apartments and is available to students of all college affiliations. You can learn more through the housing website there as well. So if this is interest to you, uh, much like the other ones, affiliation will have no bearing, and uh, you can choose it as a supplemental part of your main application. So feel free to go there if you're curious about this community. All right, we're going to take a moment to talk a bit about the residence hall options that are available at Cowell and Stevenson Colleges in particular. When it comes to continuing student areas, both Cowell and Stevenson are offering spaces uh, that are continuing student only. Uh, we have Prescott House in Cowell which houses just under 100 students, around 60 to 90 each. Um, there are a variety of room combinations here, uh, singles, triples, and quads. There's perhaps a couple large triples I didn't list, but they're very rare. Um, triple rooms, regular triple rooms, are the most common in both colleges. Uh, Cowell will also, also be offering a limited number of single rooms and the other more frosh-oriented houses for you as part of room selection. And both communities have a few small apartments within the residence halls. I'm not sure 
sure honestly how unique this is to Carlos Stevenson, but we have a couple uh, very small apartments that are built within the residence hall. So something to keep in mind if you're interested in a small apartment and you're doing group selection. Meal plans. If you're living in a residence hall, you will be required to select a meal plan. There's gonna be the blue meal plan, this is the minimum required for students living in residence halls. It's about 10 meals a week if you use exclusively in the dining hall. The gold meal plan, uh, this is uh, ideal for students who want to eat most of their meals, but not all at the UCSC dining locations. It's about 14 meals a week if you keep it only to the dining halls. And then we have the banana slug meal plan, which is uh, intended for our students who plan on using the dining hall for uh, three meals a day, seven days a week, or want the greatest flexibility and regarding food from other locations as well. So that's the largest meal plan. So when you're choosing, when you're doing your application, you will choose one of these meal plans. Uh, please note too that uh, as part of the application process, even if you're only indicating an apartment preference, it will ask you for a residence hall meal plan choice. Uh, this is key in case you later change your mind. Uh, or we're unable to offer you an apartment space and we offer you a residence hall instead, we uh, know what kind of meal plan to pair with that. So take a moment to fill this out, even if you're not uh, hoping for the residence hall. Um, a little bit more about meal plans. Uh, they can be used at all UCSC dining locations, including the dining halls, coffee shops, cafes, and markets. Meal plans will reset at the beginning of each quarter. So uh, do notice that there's other, if there's still monies left from the previous quarter, they will go away, so use them all. And then there's slug points bonus, which carry over until the end of the academic year in June can be added to any meal plan. So if you choose a smaller meal plan and find that you're a little short, you can get some bonus points, which will in fact carry over to the next quarter. You'll have an opportunity every quarter to change your meal plan for the following quarter. Although uh, it is a bit early in the term that you need to decide it. So the filing period is about 10 days. So keep that in mind. Um, it's in uh, early November or early February for the following quarters. When it comes to your meal plan, you can use them in any UCSC dining location. There are planned to be 18 locations available by fall 2023. Um, I believe that includes Rachel Carson College. No, maybe it's not on here yet. I think it should be very soon thereafter. Ah, fall 2023, I'm not sure why it's not on that map, but that's the plan. So we hope to have the Rachel Carson Oaks Dining Hall open for fall 2023, which is great. Uh, otherwise, here's a list of all the dining locations, if you're not familiar, um, the various dining halls in each uh, college pair, uh, some of the markets available, Porter Market, Merrill Market, opening, uh, well, that would be now, wouldn't it, or next quarter, and then uh, Slug Stop at Quarry Plaza, so uh, that looks like that's coming too, which is great. Uh, some Perk Coffee locations and the variety of cafes, including our own Stevenson Coffee House. All right, now we're going to get into apartment options, which I'm sure a lot of you are very interested in. Um, First, when it comes to apartment configurations, Cal and Stevenson apartments come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes, uh, including number of residents per apartment. Uh, to be noted as well as we're getting into this is that there is a pre-assignment phase where we assign like RAs, um, students with a DRC accommodation, a few other positions like the sustainability, uh, student sustainability advisor um, that can change the number of available spaces in apartment by a bit. For Cal, <coughs> As you can see, there's quite a variety. The bulk of spaces being eight person apartments. Um, most of them follow the plan of two singles, uh, one triple, two triples, uh, one of them maybe being a large triple for a few of the units. Um, I included on here the five singles, one triple. It should be noted that there's two of those and they're both RA apartments. Um, it's likely that there will be some spaces available in them in the, in the room selection process as RAs do not always fill their apartments in advance. Um, but I put them on here so you have the most information possible. Uh, there are also a lot of seven-person apartments at, St at Cowell with two singles, a triple, and a small double. And then we have a few of these outliers, uh, kind of smaller numbers of these, uh, like the two five-person apartments in the Madrone apartment or unit four with a small double and a triple. Um, there are a few limited four-person apartments that have one single and one triple. And uh, we have seven of these units that are just a double. So that's an apartment that just two people share a shared bedroom, but it has a private bathroom, a private kitchen, uh, and a shared somewhat uh, living dining room with the associated furniture as well. Uh, quite a few of these are located in the Cowell residence halls. Uh, so for instance, there's a two person apartment in the Turner residence hall. Um, and then we have a few of them in the Madrone apartment as well. 
Uh, oh, by the way, too, uh, we do plan on making this information available through the website and, and perhaps as a PDF that we'll send to you all as well later this week after we do the in-person event as well, because this information is a bit hard to come by, I realized. Uh, but here's uh, just a picture for you, the variety of spaces available through the Cal Apartments. Now, Stevenson. Stevenson also has a variety, although there's fewer apartment spaces at Stevenson than at Cal. Um, we have two eight-person apartments at Stevenson that have two singles and two large triples. Uh, there are five of the seven-person apartments planned with three singles and a quad. And then the bulk of the apartments at Stevenson are the six-person apartments with three singles and a large triple. So that is the most common space in Stevenson apartments. Um, there are a few small outliers, like a, a one unit that has a small double and a triple, then another unit, which is within house three, that has a small double and a regular double. And then we have uh, three units that are just a double apartment, although these are a little different. The Stevenson apartments, and I should make note on this form uh, before I share it out to you, are called apartment suites uh, in that the small two-person units in Stevenson do not have a full kitchen. Um, they have a kind of a kitchenette set up. So um, still no meal plan required, but the rate is a little reduced from that of a regular apartment double due to the lack of a full kitchen. <laughs> um, all right, so let's get into the nitty gritty on how room selection works. So first stage is the pre-assignment. This is before the actual room selection. I will be assigning students who have priority uh, who are in these groups, resident assistants and neighborhood assistants, um, students accepted to a campus-wide theme, uh, like the ABC themed housing. Um, we, since we house some of that here at Stevenson and Cal, I'll be doing part of that. And uh, my peers will be doing the ILC and the trans-inclusive housing options. And if you have a documented disability related accommodation, and please note these must be renewed annually, I'll be assigning you in advances as well. Um, if you haven't followed up with the DRC and you have one of these, do so now, please, so that you get it in time so we can actually uh, get your assignment before we do the room selection. All right, the actual room selection process uh, is complicated, so I'm going to go over it here, um, and I expect to go over it again at the end to iron out any details that may be unclear to you. Um, as well, there is a, a very good representation of the room selection process available through the housing website. Um, if you search for that in priority, that goes through the different waves of this process in a bit more detail that you may find very useful. I highly recommend taking a look if you're looking to get an apartment or any space really through room selection. So allow me to begin. Students with priority status who apply during the application period will be invited to participate in one or more of the room selection passes. You can participate either as an individual or as a member of a group with other students who have priority. An overview of the process, uh, there are four planned passes, although it's possible that some communities won't use all of them if the spaces are taken up through earlier passes. Uh, let's see. So this is a, an overview that will maybe be more used for us after we talk about the different passes. But if you are an affiliate and uh, depending on when you choose your space, you're going to be invited to all the passes. If this is the village or the town center where affiliation has no bearing, you'll be invited to all the passes. If you have applied to a community that is not your affiliate college, you will not get a login for the first pass or the second pass. You could still conceivably be part of a group. If one of the members of your group is an affiliate, they can make a group and have you be part of it, and they will be given a login for the first and second passes. And conceivably, they could assign you with them at that time. But, and this is very important with this whole process, if you are not an affiliate and you're applying at a community, you will not be invited to participate in the first two phases of room selection. Although again, you could conceivably be assigned as part of a group. Um, conceivably, uh, we could fill up in the first pass or in the second pass, which may make the later passes at a given community obsolete and they will not be offered. Um, although to be noted, the fourth pass is one that is campus-wide. So hopefully there will still be possibilities there. Let's get to more details here. Um, when it comes to the room selection process, if you have a group, you must all be applied at the same community. And uh, I'm going to note this as well. All this room selection, you must have priority. If you do not have priority, this will not apply. Um, if there's people in your group who have priority, they will not be able to choose a student who does not have priority to be part of the group. Uh, it's not going to say with priority every time as we go forward, although um, that is the case. So be sure to apply at the same community if you wish to form a group. Um, the room selection process is designed to allow roommate groups who can completely fill an apartment or residence hall uh, from the earliest opportunity to select a space. Um, and it also gives a certain precedence to students who have affiliation there as well. Um, so a full group will be of uh, great value in this process. 
There's tips for groups. Um, to form a group or to make changes to your group, you'll need to access the roommate request process in the housing portal. Um, and if you are a member of a group, you're gonna to wanna to designate the person in your group who has the earliest appointment time as your group leader. If you do join a roommate group, you are giving the group leader the power to select your housing and agreeing to accept their decision as final. So it is important that you uh, trust the person who's gonna be your head of your group. For the process, have a plan and backup plans. Um, I, I can't stress this enough. Uh, you need to talk to your group ahead of time about what types of rooms each person is willing to accept and who will share a room with who. Uh, some room types are highly sought after and have limited availability, such as apartments and single rooms. If you prefer space isn't available, you're gonna to need to move on to your backup plans. Um, I'm gonna go into this in more detail as we go, uh, but this is key. Uh, if you have a group in mind, all of you with priority, all apply to the same community. You're gonna to wanna to talk in advance. If you're going through the process and you want that eight person apartment and you log on and it's not available, you need to know what you're gonna do next. Um, are you gonna split your group into two, one of six and one of two? Um, are you gonna just remove one person and try for a seven? Uh, you need to be uh, ready so you don't like ruin friendships or, or crush feelings as you're going through this process. So be ready with plans. Um, you may need to be changing your group on the fly as you do room selection, depending on what spaces are available at your login time. More on this, uh, when it comes to the room selection process, we're gonna use a randomized lottery to determine the order in which students can log into room selection. The lottery start time will be the earliest that a student can log into the room selection process. So uh, in particular, we're talking about the first wave here. Um, well, all the waves really, but uh, note that in the first and second waves, it will only be a lottery time will only be given to affiliates. So you're gonna need an affiliate in your group if you're looking to participate in the first or second wave. More about the room selection process. Excuse me. Um, Remember that depending on space availability, space availability, all passes may not take place at every college community. And if you do not select a space during the current pass, you will get a lottery time for the next pass if spaces remain available. This can vary depending on, really depending on you and your peers and what you all choose. We don't know for sure how many people are going to apply to a given community, nor what spaces they'll want to take. So it's a bit of an unknown there for us. So we're gonna get into it about the first pass. Um, during the first pass at a community, you're going to have to fill any space uh, that you choose. So if you want an apartment, your group will have to fill the apartment to be able to take it. If you can't fill the apartment, it will not show as a possibility. Um, you'll need to fill a room as well if you're looking at residence hall spaces. If there's three of you and you want a quad, the quad will not work for your group because you must fill it. You would instead see triples or large triples. Um, so you must be able to completely fill a residence hall room or an entire apartment for this phase. Uh, note that uh, it may also reflect in terms of gender. Um, this is where flexibility is important. Um, depends a lot on the room makeup, whether it's like a, there's three singles and a triple. Um, a lot of these are hard to say because there's such a variety for us. We really strongly recommend that you be flexible and ready to change if needed. Um, note that to select a residence hall triple, you'd need a group of three, all with the same gender. I'll talk a bit more about gender later on this as well, if you have questions regarding that. Um, but when it comes to this, uh, note as well, I'm going to say it again, that only affiliates who applied at the college will actually be given a login time for this first pass. So if you are a group of all non-affiliates and you're interested in an apartment at Stevenson, it will not likely work. Um, you would not be invited to the first pass nor the second pass, and the likelihood of any apartment still being there the third are not very good. But let us go on. Um, second pass. So the first pass was all about completely filling spaces, completely filling apartments, completely filling residence hall rooms. Um, that means, uh, let me talk a little bit more about this first pass. If you wanted a residence hall single and you're an affiliate, then during your login time, you could secure a residence hall single. However, you would not be able to secure an apartment single because such would not be filling an apartment. Um, or at least very unlikely that that scenario would happen with a pre-selection. Uh, so the first wave is all about completely filling a space. It's really focused more on groups or individuals trying to secure residence hall singles at the given community. For the second pass, you do not need to completely fill a space to select it. Um, if there's just two of you uh, and you wanted a space in an apartment, the two of you could secure 
well, a, a complete two-person apartment is such as still available. Or conceivably, if there is an apartment with space, like two spaces in it, you could fill those spaces. Or you could take two parts of a triple in a residence hall. You don't have to fill the room. But let me note that for the second pass, only affiliates will be given a login time. Um, if you are not an affiliate, you will not be given a login time for this partial part. So keep that in mind. Affiliation will have a large impact this year. There is a third pass plan. If there are still spaces available in a community, like say Stevenson or Cowell, um, then uh, for the third wave, we are going to offer anyone who applied who has priority, again, I say it, um, with a login time for the third pass. You do not have to be an affiliate for the third pass. Any available spaces left in the community will be available to you to choose during the third pass. Uh, we do not know if there will be space available at that point. Um, it depends a lot on the earlier waves. But, but if so, you could choose a space in an apartment if open. Um, you could choose an available space in a residence hall room. Uh, anything that was made available for room selection at a given community will be open during the third pass for applicants who applied at that community. Now, uh, there is another pass here, the fourth pass. The fourth pass is campus-wide. You do not need to fill a space and uh, affiliation will have no bearing. For the fourth wave, we are going to make every space available at UCSC that was a uh, part of room selection available to everyone. Um, there will be a lottery still, so uh, to determine who will get what. But uh, if you haven't chosen or been assigned to a space by the fourth pass, when you log in, you will be able to choose from any remaining spaces throughout all of UCSC, whether that's the town center, uh, a triple in Stevenson, um, a space at Porter, any space that's available will be open to you to choose. Affiliation will have no bearing. You do not have to fill the group. That is the fourth pass. This is the last chance for you as a student who applied with priority to choose your own space. Um, yeah. After that, um, if you did not choose a space or you were unable because there was nothing available uh, through the process, then you are going to be on the priority wait list and I will be working through the summer to find you a space. Um, either one that meets your application preferences, which would be the quickest way. So I do highly recommend you have a lot of choices possible at this stage. Um, otherwise, I may contact you to offer you an alternative. Um, if you're holding out for an apartment and we have no apartments, I will probably offer you a residence hall shared room at some point. Um, you can choose not to accept it, um, but if you don't take it, uh, you may lose your priority status and be put to the general wait list while we go through that priority status and at least make everyone with priority an offer of some kind of space at UCSC. Uh, <clears throat> yep, so stay positive. Um, you keep your priority status, even if you didn't choose or were not able to choose during room selection, and we will be working to find you a space or to at least offer you some kind of choice at UCSC. Gender and room assignments. So this is a, this is a, definitely a bit of a complicated one. Um, a student's gender designation in the My UCSC portal, so this is what you, you place on there, will play a role in determining your room and roommates. In most cases, uh, students are assigned roommates of the same gender. Uh, you can view and update your gender information through the My UCSC. Uh, if you do make changes, they're updated within 24 hours. So note that if you were doing room selection and you wanted to change your gender, it would not kick in a time to make a change there. So think about this in advance. Um, when it comes to gender and room assignments, uh, here's a little diagram that shows how we look at the various uh, genders in terms of what you put in the My UCSC and how we're working on your assignments. Um, so generally speaking, when it comes to the room selection process, uh, whoever first places into a room will set the, the gender for that room. Uh, there are a few spaces that we make a single gender, which are already prearranged, but for the most part, it's what you assign to it. Um, worth noting here is that, uh, well, let's go to the next page here. Um, should you have a female gender designation, uh, you're going to be assigned to a room with other students with the same gender designation. Uh, should you be uh, a student with a male gender, um, you would be assigned to a room with other students who also have the male gender designation. Should you have the non-binary or a different identity as your des gender designation, we're going to assign you to a room with other students with, who also have a non-binary or different identity gender designations. Um, get a little more here. Um, so uh, it is possible for a housing coordinator like myself to assign you in advance if you're looking for uh, a mixed gender room. Um, worth noting here that apartments, we do make a few apartments available single gender, but for the most part, 
the actual apartment can be mixed gender as a default. Um, the rooms as a default are not mixed gender, they're specific. So if you are looking to live in a room with students of a different gender, you should get in touch with me before we do the main room selection. And we'll talk about different possibilities and perhaps a pre-assignment for you. Um, because you cannot mix genders during the actual room selection process. The system cannot do it within a room. Again, the apartment won't care. You could have uh, two students who designate as female, uh, in a single, one student who designates as non-binary in a single, and the triple could be uh, students who identify as male. This is fine in terms of an apartment, um, but you can't mix genders within a room without some outside help. So contact me if you are looking for a mixed gender room. More information is available on the gender designations and how you can uh, work with that through the housing website. So take a look if you're curious. All right. Regarding the waitlist students uh, after room selection and continuing throughout the summer, um, the community staff will be working to assign you. Uh, so long as you have your application with us and you are remaining as a priority waitlist student, it's showing us that you still want housing. We're going to assign you as soon as something shows up. Um, so note that uh, if you said you would take a residence all single and you weren't able to get one during room selection, but one shows up uh, in July, um, I will assign you to that single. I won't ask first, I'll just assign you. Because you have an application, you're telling me you are still actively looking for housing, so we will assign you directly. Uh, if you're only holding out for a single, it might not happen. I strongly recommend that you be flexible. The more flexible you are when you're making your room preferences, the greater your chances of being assigned housing. Um, you can return to the housing portal anytime until you've been assigned to update your room preferences or to cancel it if you find something else. Um, just be sure to include all the room types you agree to accept. Uh, new this year is the option for you to choose uh, different room types at different communities. So you can really make a huge list of spaces that you would accept. The more you put on there, the better the chances of us finding you an assignment, uh, one that meets your preferences. So please consider being as broadly flexible as you can. Um, I want to take a moment here to notice as well that uh, I talk a lot about room selection and the actual choosing of spaces. When you're doing room selection, you're choosing your space, the actual room types that you put on your application will have no bearing. Uh, you are free to choose from whatever spaces are available to the community. If you said that you would only take an apartment single when you applied, but you're choosing to take a apartment triple during room selection, this is fine. There's no bar, there's no bar to that. You are able to pick whatever you wish during room selection, depending on what is available. Um, but when it comes to the wait list, we're really looking at what you put on your preferences. So take a moment to broaden that if you get to this stage. Uh, more on this is that uh, if you are on the priority wait list, so you've gone through room selection and did not choose or were not able to be assigned, you need to be patient. We cannot predict when or what type of spaces become available. At that point, we're really looking for people to cancel, uh, thus creating openings, which we'll assign you to. Um, so we won't know really the timing or exactly what opens up as we go through the process. Um, and again, if a space matching one of your preferences becomes available, we will assign you directly to the space. We won't ask in advance. We're just going to assign you and send you a confirmation email. Uh, what this means really, let's talk about the cancellation policy is that it is your responsibility to cancel your application through the housing portal if you do not want housing anymore. Um, it is not only once or twice that I've talked to students who I assigned during the summer and 10 minutes later they contact me to say that they don't need the housing, that they already found something off campus. Um, I cannot reverse the cancellation fee at that point. Um, you, the student, need to be sure to cancel as soon as you don't need it anymore. But don't forget it's here. Don't assume we'll never offer you or find you anything. If you secure housing off campus that is more to what you want, um, go online and cancel with us right away. If you have not been assigned yet, there is no fee to cancel. No charge at all, just cancel, straightforward. It takes only a moment. But if we have assigned you and you cancel, there will be a cancellation fee. And in the cost of it, the cancellation fee will rise throughout the summer. If you cancel on or before July 1st, the cancellation fee is $150. Should you cancel between July 2nd and August 1st, it goes up to $250. And if it's after August 1st, it is $350. That's the general cancellation fee during the year. So once again, if you are canceling your wait list application and you have not been assigned, there is no charge. But if you have been assigned, then the charge will grow here as we see. Uh, so I'm gonna really review, we'll do that in a moment as we answer questions. Um, but remember, uh, probably the most important thing here is not to miss the application period. 
Uh, it's about a month away, April 10th to 17th. Anyone interested in university housing must apply during this time to keep your priority housing and to give you the best chance even if you don't have priority housing. And if you have questions uh, after this presentation, you're welcome to contact us. Uh, here's our housing email. I also emailed you all pretty recently, like today. So you have that and you can reply if you wish, or you can always call us or come by the office as well. Our office is located under the Cal and Stevenson Dining Room. All right, well, that's the bulk of this presentation. Uh, why don't we go ahead and answer some questions? I'm gonna stop sharing. Great, Jed. We have some questions in the chat. Um, one of the questions is how many spaces do we have available in the RPATH apartments? In the RPATH apartments? All right. mm -hmm. it's, uh, there's 24 spaces in the RPATH apartments at Stevenson. So 24 of the apartment spaces are uh, designated for RPATH. That is four units, it's all in an area um, that is all uh, allocated for the RPATH apartments. I am not sure how many of the apartments are available in the other ABC communities. I don't have a count. Great. And then our next question is, do you have to apply for the UP, UTC application separate from the other um, housing applications? And then how does applications to Camper Park work as well? Oh, this is good. Um, the UTC and the Camper Park are considered different facilities. So you'll need to commit to those if you wanna go for them. Um, that is to say, if you wanna live at the UTC, you would apply at the UTC. And uh, it is through the UTC that you will go through this room selection process regarding a group, the first wave or the second wave. Um, and the third wave, if it's there as well, the third wave won't really apply at the UTC because there's no affiliation. So the third wave won't really exist there. It would be full groups, partials or individuals or partial groups, and then the campus wide as well. So you cannot do both the UTC and Stevenson. However, uh, you could do the UTC and indicate a preference for one of the campus theme communities like Trans Inclusive Community or RPATH. Thanks. And then I have a, a couple of questions about bringing in people from a separate affiliation. So can you talk a little bit more about, um, can you go back to the slide that talks about the different, the different, uh, what do you call them? Yeah, no, I'm with you. Uh, give me just a moment here. Yeah. And so that we can talk about if you have someone who is in your group, who is a non-affiliate and you need to drop them from their group, when are they going to get a time and when are they going to be able to select a space? Yes, I'll talk about that. And this is certainly probably the most confusing part of the process. So I'm happy to go through it again here. Let me share. Bear with me a moment. Looks like my screen moved. All right, so what we're talking about are the various passes. Yes. So, uh, all right. So let's say you have a group and uh, there's six of you and you're interested in one of those Stevenson six person apartments. Uh, if you all apply at Stevenson and you all have priority and none of you have affiliation, you will not be invited to participate in the first pass. You will not be invited to participate in the second pass. Your first opportunity to secure housing at Stevenson would be in the third pass because there is no affiliate in your group. Um, at the third pass, then everyone in your group that you all, because you all apply to Stevenson, you all have priority, we will be given a login time to choose from whatever spaces may be available at Stevenson. The chances of getting an apartment at that point are not good. Um, if, however, your group includes one person who is a Stevenson affiliate, that one person will be given a login time for the first pass. Allow me to be clear once again, if there is one person in your group, so all six of you apply to Stevenson, all six of you have priority, and one of you is a Stevenson affiliate, they are the only one that will be given a, a login time for the first and second waves, the first and second passes. Um, you could all six form a group. If you make uh, the affiliate your leader, then at their login time, they can log in to the room selection process for this first pass and conceivably assign all six of you to a six person apartment. Um, the limit on affiliation is only limiting who gets the login time. So as a group, your affiliate could assign all six of you to an apartment, even if five of you are non-affiliates. Uh, second pass, I'll just touch on it. Um, again, 
any for the second pass, basically uh, here, let me go into a bit. First pass, every affiliate who applied at Stevenson who has priority is given a login time. Now it's possible that some of those students when they log in will not have apartment spaces available or at least not full apartments like they're looking for. Uh, in that case, if there's still spaces available, there's gonna be a second pass. Um, the lottery will be redone. It will only include people from the second pass who are affiliates who applied at the community and have not already chosen or been assigned to room during the first wave. Um, at that point, uh, when they're logging in, that affiliate could assign themselves to something or they could make a group and assign non-affiliates as part of their groups together into a room or an apartment. It would not work for someone in this case to say, take a residence hall triple and a residence hall single. Uh, those are two separate rooms, so it wouldn't work for one individual to assign a group to those spaces. However, if there is an apartment that has an empty triple and an empty single um, in the scenario where perhaps there are two singles taken during pre-selection, so there's a, an apartment that has one single and a triple and no one takes it during the first pass, in the second pass, uh, an affiliate uh, could make a group and fill those four spaces, or just three of them. They could take two spaces in the triple and the single. Uh, it's the third pass that anyone who applied who hasn't chosen yet or been assigned yet will be given a login time. I recognize this is a bit confusing. This information regarding the passes is put out in more detail on the housing website. Um, I think I have it here just to show you briefly or not. All right, well, if you look on the housing website for uh, priority, it has more details about it. It talks about the different waves in detail. Um, it can hopefully clarify. Uh, hopefully this helped clarify a bit as well. I'm sorry that it is confusing, but we're doing our best to try to give new students the most options available. Sure. Um, I just kind of, I've seen the questions in the chat and I want to hopefully try and clarify some things. So yeah, if yeah. you are a Stevenson affiliate and you apply to Stevenson College, you will get a lottery time number. You can that use that. If you are forming a group, you can use that number to be the group leader and figure out an apartment. So like Jed mentioned, if you are six in a group, you don't see any six people apartments, you have to drop down to a four and then you are able to place those four people. Let's say those two people, one of them is a Stevenson affiliate and one of them is not. That person who is not an affiliate will not get an assignment in that first pass. They will wait until the second pass and then they will be given their own lottery number and then they can go into the um, second pass time to choose a room at that time. The other person who is not an affiliate will not get a number during that second pass. They will have to wait until the third pass opens up where they will get a number and then they can select a space. A little clarity on this as well. Um, in the scenario we're talking about where, let's say there's six of you and you have two affiliates in the group and you log on as Leanna says and there's no six person available. So you break it into a four and a two. Um, both of those affiliates, would have been given login times for that first pass. So conceivably in this scenario, if you kept an affiliate with both groups that are broken um, and the second small group of two now um, has an affiliate and their login time is later, they could log in at that later time with their group of two and perhaps secure a space. You'd be looking to only take a, a full apartment. So a group of two is pretty limited. Um, there's only uh, two or three units of Stevenson that will accommodate just two alone. Um, but it is possible. So uh, flexibility is key here. Um, what if there's more people you might join in with in that scenario? So you have your six and you need to break it into a four and a two. Uh, you know, maybe you have two more people who the second group could join in and now you have two groups of four. Um, this is totally viable and worth pursuing. Flexibility is going to be key. You're going to want to be ready with different possibilities, different thoughts, how you're going to break stuff up and go for it from there. And then I have some questions about Regent Scholars. So do Regent Scholars, do they get guaranteed housing? And what does that mean? Uh, they will get uh, priority housing so long as they're currently living in housing. Is there, if, if you have, if you are a Regent Scholar and you did not get your priority information, you're welcome to contact us and we can look at it. Um, but uh, as far as I understand it, I guess I just saw something that they might be offering some one-year guarantees for first-year students. Um, generally, we're not using the term guarantee. Uh, it's all about priority, and the priority isn't an assurance. But uh, if you are a Regent Scholar 
Smith Scholar, um, a few other groups, I think veterans, uh, you should still have priority, but part of the criteria for priority is that you'd be living in housing right now. Um, so if you are uh, off campus right now, um, even if you're in one of these groups that would normally have priority, you wouldn't because you're not living with us right now. So part of the guarantee, excuse me, part of the priority criteria is that you'd be living in housing throughout a winter and spring quarters. And then we have some questions about the UTC. So do you know how fast does the UTC fill up? And is it more likely for students with no priority? It, tricky things, I can't tell the future. Um, so every year we do this and uh, there's maybe some trends, but uh, we, we don't know. Um, generally, I think the UTC is not always super sought after, so it's a good bet, but I can't tell you a, a real guess on how it'll be. I don't know what you all are gonna pick. Um, the UTC does shine and that affiliation has no bearing. So if you have a mixed group, it won't matter. Um, let's say on the flip side of that, if you have six students that are all Stevenson affiliates and you're a group, uh, your chances of having a really good lottery time are better because there's six of you that all get a login time. So the chance of one of those six being one of the first is, is much better than if there's just one of you. At the UTC, it's all an open field. Um, uh, if you're really curious, I think Nicole, who is my counterpart for the, the UTC in the village, will be doing an information session as well. So the email I sent you all earlier today should have a link for that as well. And you're you're more than welcome to go check it out. Um, see what uh, she said. She might have a better uh, grasp on how sought after the UTC has been the last few years, which is honestly the best we can do in terms of predicting. We can give you an idea of how it went the last few years, but we truly don't know how it'll be this year. You have a lot of freedom in terms of what you apply for and what you choose. So another question that I want to answer is the pass period. So as of right now, the passes are listed as May 10th through 11th is the first pass. The second pass will happen May 16th through 17th. The third pass will happen May 23rd through 24th. And then the fourth pass is going to happen on May 26th. It sounds right there. Uh, they need a little time between to reset stuff because again, um, after the first pass, uh, they're going to look at who still is affiliates um, and haven't been assigned yet or chosen yet and issue new login times for them and then reset the system up to go. So uh, multiple passes and we'll, we'll see how many we go. Um, as an example, last year, Stevenson had some 2000 students apply, um, a thousand of which all had priority. There's only 175 apartments at Stevenson um, and a similar number of residence halls. So uh, it was really tight at Stevenson last year, uh, whereas some other communities were perhaps underrepresented because Stevenson was so heavily applied for. So these things can vary depending on what you students choose. All right. Thank you, Jed. And thank you, everyone. Um, hopefully this answered some of your questions. If you still have more questions, you can reach out to the housing coordinator or you can come to our in-person session um, that we're having a little bit later this week to answer some questions as well. And, and then we're, and gonna stick so we're gonna stick around, we're gonna stick around a bit at the end to also answer some more questions as well. So thank you for coming. And again, you can review the website at housing.ucsc.edu to answer more questions or you can reach out to us.